All right, guys, it's a beautiful morning at the shop. We're gonna take a look at this 1995 Miata. It's got an automatic trans, which I know before you guys all say boo and purists want it manual and all that. The automatic transmissions in these cars are actually pretty good considering the age. It's really not that bad. I could kind of see myself going to get ice cream in it, not having to really worry about what my left foot's doing. But this car has given us a lot of problems. Um, it came in because it doesn't really shift well, and she, the, the owner had previously had the transmission replaced and apparently didn't solve the issues that were going on. So we've kind of been all through this thing. We don't really spe specialize in automatic transmissions and we are very upfront about that. Um, you know, I don't really know a lot about what goes on inside there, to be honest. It's not something we, we work on. But we told her, you know, as the Miata shop, we'd take a look and just see if we could find anything um, on this car that could be causing the problems. You know, because once you replace the transmission and see no improvement, it starts to rule out the possibility that it's something inside the trans. So we're kind of interested in, you know, the whole garbage in, garbage out. If the transmission is getting a bad signal from something else, then it will behave poorly. And so we've been going through, I swapped out the cam sensor because there was some weird stuff going on on the dash. Um, we checked grounds and cleaned grounds. I did a bunch of different vacuum and smoke uh, leak tests on various parts of the vacuum systems because the automatic trans um, also has kind of its own vacuum system. So we went all through that. You know, I checked to make sure everything was plugged in right. I back probed sensors and checked um, for ohms and voltages on temp sensors and solenoids and, you know, just cannot find anything. Um, I even had a spare automatic trans um, computer that we swapped in. Um, so the, the transmission has its own computer and then there's the engine computer. So we actually had a spare one from an automatic trans from a 95 that we had done a manual swap and I, I held on to some of the bits and pieces and that made no difference either. And you know, sometimes when you fire it up, it's fine. Sometimes it won't shift into fourth gear Sometimes the tachometer bounces all over the place and it spits and backfires and, and surges and drives like crap. And some days it has no problems at all. So first we're going to take a look here, see what we get this morning. Seems kind of okay so far. sort of surging and losing power right now. Which I'm gonna say is not necessarily a transmission problem. But so far this is not one of the transmission related issues that we've seen before. Well, I have seen this issue in this car before. But the primary issue is that it, it just didn't want to shift into fourth gear, or it couldn't decide. It would kind of switch between third and fourth a whole bunch. Yeah, so right now, it's really sort of bucking and surging. And then now it seems pretty much okay. So that's been the whole thing. I mean, I've tried swapping parts, I've tried testing things, and nothing, Nothing that we've done has, has had any lasting improvement. Um, sometimes it seems like it's better, sometimes it seems like it makes it worse. And then, yeah, now this, this surging, kind of see the tack go in there. Yeah, I mean, right now the transmission seems to actually be operating normally, but the engine is just really not behaving properly. 
occasionally I'll take it out and drive it and everything's perfect. So one of the last things that we wanted to try, and I didn't have one sitting in the, uh, in the shop, surprisingly. We've got piles of parts all over the place, but I did not have an ECU for a 1995. Um, and interestingly, in the NA models, the ECU between the auto and manual is the same. It actually has a has one wire that goes between the engine controller and the transmission controller to communicate between them. And if it sees communication on that line, then the then the engine computer says, "Oh, I guess it's an automatic, so we're going to behave like an automatic." And if that one line is instead shorted to ground, then the ECU will say, yeah, I guess this is a manual, everything's fine. So when we've done conversions, wow, yeah, it's really bucking pretty bad, but it is shifting normally. But yeah, so when we've done conversions between auto and manual, it's kind of fun because you take that one line that goes to the trans controller and you just put a little ring terminal on it and ground it to the chassis and the ECU is happy and assumes that everything's normal and that it's a manual. Um, the, the only time it'll set a fault is if it sees an open circuit on that line. If there's not ground or signals coming from it, it will set a fault and say, hey, where's the transmission controller? We're missing something. So it's kind of unique that way. But yeah, you, you can really feel it's just it's just kind of surging but it is shifting normally we'll see if I if I give it some gas if it'll kick down yeah so the downshift and upshift normally the other test I was doing oh it just downshifted a third sort of for no reason and then back head back to the shop and uh, see if we can swap out the CCU see if that does anything um, so other than that we're getting we're starting to run out of ideas pretty quickly here maybe you can see the tack a little bit better there you can see it's just it's just bouncing everywhere you can feel the car surging We've diagnosed a lot of really bizarre Miata issues over the years. Um, and it, it always kind of comes down to, you know, a vacuum leak that was really hard to find or, you know, one particular sensor that's, you know, intermittently acting up, that kind of stuff. Um, but this Miata gave us a lot of trouble, a lot of very bizarre issues and you know each issue could be attributed to something in particular um, the car would surge when you were driving it which made me think about checking the fuel system um, the tachometer would bounce up and down for no reason and and cause like misfires and things like that which made me think to check the coils and the cam sensor and i checked all the grounds and cleaned them and this, this car also is an automatic transmission car, so the transmission was behaving erratically. It would upshift and downshift sort of randomly. Sometimes the shifts were really rough, sometimes they were smooth. Um, and the, the owner actually had the transmission replaced and that did not solve any of the issues. So at a certain point, you know, we've sort of checked everything that we can find and it, it just has so many small issues and they're not consistent. One day it's misfiring and um, you know backfiring and popping out the exhaust, and one day it doesn't shift into fourth gear, and the next get day the tachometer is bouncing everywhere, or the idle's acting weird. Um, you know, just no no consistency and no root cause that we could find that made any influence. Um, so we started looking at the ECU just because, I mean, it's this this. I'll just say is is the first one that, that we've seen at the shop that had an ECU that seems to be the issue. So we looked around in here and it's really subtle 
hopefully the camera picks this up, but you can see this resistor right there has kind of a black stain around one of the connectors. And then there's these capacitors over here. And again, there's kind of some, it's hard to get the light on there, but there's kind of some, you know, it's staining like black, almost watermarks around it. I don't believe that's water. I believe that the resistors and capacitors in there may have, you know, overheated or worn out somehow and like leaked some of their internals to be externals. Um, I'm not an electrical engineer, so unfortunately I can't give you a better or more technical explanation than that, but you can see that black stuff in there. And, and that was enough evidence for us to say, all right, let's, let's just try to swap the ECU. Um, it's not something that we normally take lightly just because it is such a rare occurrence. Um, but, but yeah, we ended up swapping the ECU and it's, it's a completely different car now. The throttle, um, throttle response is way better. The transmission shifts perfectly. Uh, the idle is smoother. The tachometer doesn't bounce around anymore. I mean, like, like I said, this is something to consider, you know, if you have a lot of very strange issues that are intermittent and it, you know, they're sort of, sort of all interrelated, but, but again, not consistent, um, and you know, you've checked the basic things that can affect those, like the bouncing tack is normally a ground. And like I said, the surging is normally a fuel uh, pressure or flow issue. Um, and the transmission shifting, to be honest, I don't know a lot about automatic transmissions. Um, so that could be internal things, but, but we checked everything external that we could on the transmission, ohmed out sensors and uh, solenoids and things like that, you know, to ensure there wasn't anything um, external to the transmission so yeah so there you have it pretty weird one but if you pop open your ECU you can look around in there and see you know if you see evidence that some of the capacitors or resistors are you know burned or possibly have leaked something out um, you know that can influence the circuits around it or just the fact that the capacitor is no longer working will have an influence on the system as well so there you go.